them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of ages. Surely I am with you always, always to the very end of ages. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. And we will and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you for your people that have come together in fellowship and worship and praise in honor of you. Father God, we thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for all the busyness and all the goings on in this day. We thank you because you gave us the strength to do it. Father God, we thank you because you alone are God and you're worthy. We thank you because we recognize that in you we live, we breathe, and we have our being. Father God, we thank you for this time of praise and worship and fellowship. Father God, I ask that you go before each and every one of the speakers and do what it is that you do. Because we recognize that you do the work. Father God, as we continue to sit and glean onto the information that we receive today. Father God, I ask that we'll be able to take that word and apply it to our lives daily. Father God, we thank you for this time of the resurrection season. We thank you for the time before this, the week they call Holy Week. Father God, we thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made for us. Father God, there are some that are going through a health challenge right now. Father God, we see them as being whole and complete in you. Because your word has already said that by your stripes, by your stripes, we're healed. Father God, we thank you for those that may be going through a little bereavement, or their hearts may be a little heavy, their minds might be a little off right now. But Father God, we thank you because you said in the midst of that, you would be our comforter, you would be our director, you would be our guidance, and you would give us peace. Yes. Father God, we thank you. Thank Father you. God, we love you. Yes. Father God, we adore you. Yes. Father God, because you alone are God and you are almighty, you're all powerful. Yes. And unto you, do all the glory, the honor, and the praise. I give thanks to you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He 
supposedly he hasn't risen. He has risen. He's already risen in our lives. And because he lives, I live. And I'm so grateful for that song. At this point, we're going to turn this part of the portion of the service over to our own apostle, Matthew Gravel. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord today, and I just thank God from whom all of our blessings do flow. Yes. Thank God for this day. For this is the day that He has made. Yes. Amen. Let us rejoice. Yes. And be glad in it. Yes. How about that? Amen. Because the Lord has blessed us to be here to celebrate this holiday season, resurrection Amen. season. And I'm glad about it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I say I'm glad about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're looking to have a high time today Amen. in the spirit of the Lord. We don't have to invite him here because he's already oh, here. Right. Now, did you, did you bring him with you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> the word of God tells us that where there are two or three gathered together, Touching and agreeing that he would be in the midst. Amen. 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 But before we get started, I'd just like to welcome everyone. And uh, we thank God for our <coughs> musician here. And he just came right on in and feel right at home. Amen. I like that. I love that. Yeah, I like that. Oh, oh, yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it's the same life spirit that bear witness. Amen. That we are the children of God. Amen. 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 And I know everybody got a lot to do, and, and so uh, we're not going to hold you, or we're not going to try to prolong the service today. We just want to give God what is due unto him. Amen? Amen. Amen. I often say if we take care of God's business, Come on. Amen. he would take care of our business. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But I just want to sing my little Jesus song All right. that I usually sing. All right. And it's a fellowship song, and the Jesus in me. Uh -huh. Loves to Jesus in okay. you. Amen. And as we sing that, just get up and just greet somebody and say hello. Because I know a lot of us in here don't know a lot of people. And then maybe again you do. Is that all right? Amen. So just say hello to somebody today. Amen. 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 The Jesus in me. The Jesus in you. The Jesus in me. Love the Jesus in you.
amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, do you feel just a little bit better now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. On behalf of the Women Ministers Christian Association, and to the pastor of this church, Pastor Sykes, Amen. And all of our pastors that are present today, all of the saints of God, Amen. again, we welcome you to our service. This is one of the services we usually have once a year on behalf of the Women Ministers Christian Association, the founder, the belated Reverend Bishop Josephine H. Thompson, and she was the founder of this association. And God has called her own. God has called her home. And therefore, we have picked up the mallet and we're running with it. Is that all right? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Without a vision, God's people would perish. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We're here to keep the vision alive. Yes. Glory yes. to God for the works that she has done yes. down through the years. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I don't know if you saw the sign that was erected in honor of her right there on the corner of Wallace and Kingsley. Amen. So if you didn't see it coming in, take a look when you go out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But the works that she has done is speaking for her. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we are going to start our services right now. We have seven anointed women of God that is Amen. present here. And I'd just like to say that the association is not just limited to women. Amen. It's men and women. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you don't have to leave your church to be a part of the association. And so what we do is iron, shopping, and iron. Is that all right? I don't think nobody knows Amen. everything. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And we are helpers one of the other. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to hear some... Some good preaching today. Praise the Lord from these great women today in the name of Jesus. And so without prolonging the time, our first speaker would be Dr. Sylvia Black. And she's going to speak on Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Coming from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 3rd. 34th verse. So let us receive her as she come at this time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for having me. Amen. As you know, I love to say, so I just would like to start with sing a little piece of this song. <laughs> Only a look at Jesus. Only a look at Jesus. Oh, so bowed down with care he will bring salvation eternal life to bear can I say that one more time Jesus, oh, so bowed down with care. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor to be able to speak on the first word that uh, Jesus spoke on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it comes from the scripture of Luke 23, 24, which says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I love to write, I love to sing, I just live, love to glorify the Lord in every way that I can, you know, to stay in the Word. When I have a problem or a question, I always look up the Word in the Bible to find out what my answer is, and I always get my answer right from God's Word, which is in His Word, in the Bible. And it's very difficult, I know, from personal experience, to be able to forgive someone, especially when they have persecuted you and done all manner of evil against you and called you everything but a child of God. It's hard to forgive them. It's hard to even say it out your mouth, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, because they know that they knew what they were doing when they did it. <laughs> okay, and, um, but it's, uh, we're being obedient to the word of God by doing that. And by us saying that to the Lord and asking him to forgive, then we will absolutely be able to receive forgiveness from God as well for the wrong that we've done. Because he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone, and I don't think nobody's without sin. Most of us were born in sin. Okay, so we couldn't help that. But we can help the fact that we, what we do after that. <clears throat> uh, Jesus died on the cross as he hung there on the cross between two sinners, and he knew no sin. Okay, but he also, he, he, um, he asked for them to be forgiven for their sins. He hung on the cross so that we would have a choice as to whether or not to serve him or not. He's not going to impose his will upon us. So he gives us an opportunity. Come on. Okay. Now, there's several reasons why we need to forgive. First, we need to be obedient to the word of God by doing that, okay? And unforgiveness, when you don't forgive, it can lead to a hardened heart, uh, other physical infirmities, which may lead to incurable diseases and or conditions, or even fatality. Amen, say that. Uh, mm -hmm. Unforgiveness can lead to you holding a grudge against someone that did something to you a long time ago. They may be dead and gone. Or they may have forgotten all about you, and here you are still holding the grudge against them. Unforgiveness can actually, you can end up in hell because you have not forgiven your perpetrator. And here you are trying to get away from your perpetrator, and y'all end up in hell burning for all eternity together. What's the sense of that? Okay, if you look at the book of Matthew 6.14, it specifically says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not others forgive others their sin, then your father, our father, will not forgive our sins. Mm -hmm. And it's important because we can sin in our heart and don't even know it. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Come on, you can look that. at somebody wrong or say something or do something or even blaspheme against the Holy Spirit right. and you don't sin. Yeah. And then what you gonna do about that? You're gonna ask the Lord for forgiveness, but whether he receives you or not, that's oh. another story. Ooh. Okay, so we have to always make sure that we stay in the will of God so that we can be in his good graces. Okay, as a, as a Christian, we find ourselves suffering. Everybody's going to suffer. And I learned this the hard way because I used to wonder, Lord, why me? Why I got to suffer? You know, but I realized that there are two ways of suffering. You suffer as a slave to sin uh, for doing what's wrong in the sight of God. God is not pleased with you when you suffer that way. That means you cause your own sin to come upon you. You do things that you know you ain't got no business doing. Or you suffer as a slave to righteousness for doing what's right in the sight of God. And therefore, God is pleased with us. We are in his will. We are still in his will. But we still must suffer. Jesus Christ hung on the cross. He had a thorn of, of crowns in his head, bleeding from his head. He was spit on. He was mocked. He was talked about, ridiculed. Um, and they wanted him dead. They wanted him gone. And I think it had a lot to do with the economy. Because you had a lot of folks that were sick that couldn't mingle with the folks that was well. Because if you were unclean, you had to announce unclean and you had to live all the way over there, probably in the graveyard somewhere where Lazarus lived. And the good, the folks that was clean and healthy and lived over here where they could make some money, they could go to work every day. Mm -hmm. So now here Jesus is healing everybody, and now the sick folks, now nah, they can go to work now. I can give me a job. I can get, make me some money now, but now you're taking away from what's going on over here. These kings and queens, they don't pronounce their king, kingship and their queenship on their own. They didn't earn that. You know, but there was nobody else to claim it. So now you got somebody over here saying, I want, I want a job. I can work. I'm, I'm well. I'm healthy now. No, we got to get rid of Jesus because he's messing with the economy. How many? Come on. Come on. 
So um, when you suffer as a slave to righteousness, you're not alone. Okay, we're not alone. And just remember, brother, it's, it's hard to, to forgive somebody. Don't go to them and tell them I forgive you. Because when you tell the enemy you forgive them, then you're saying, oh, it's okay what you did to me. You can do it again. Y'all turn. The Bible says when they slap you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Okay, that don't mean stand there and let them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, we as Christians, we are strong Christians. You know, we just look weak to the, uh, to the, to the fleshly individuals. You know, we're strong Christians, we have power and we have authority. Why? Because our God has power and authority. And he gives that to us as servants of him. We're his friend. He's our friend. He's our everything. He's, he's our all in all. He's our mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. And just because you're going through hell and high water, God is still just as powerful as he was when you was happy. Right. Okay? When you were going through the, uh, the fire, the fiery furnace, he's right there in the middle of the fire. Okay? When you get ready to get the belly of the whale, you feel trapped. You feel like you're closed in. Like they're about to eat you up and devour you. God is there. Okay? We have to recognize that and acknowledge that he's there before us. He's there with us and he's there after us. It says in the Bible, I go, I'm, I'm the first and the last. Right? He says, I go, I'm the, I'm, nobody's before me, nobody comes after me. So it means if you don't get it right with him, you ain't, you ain't gonna never get it right. You're gonna be out of luck. Okay? <laughs> Which, <laughs> which we're not alone, brothers and sisters. Even in the midst of death, Jesus interceded for those who violated him. Jesus is going through all this pain from the nails and his hands and his feet. See, because that what the way that reason why they hung Jesus from the cross is because it was more of a painful and humiliating way to die. They wanted to prove to everybody the Romans, I believe, uh, created this, and they said, "Well, see, Jesus, he created sin. So now, because what they used to do is they would throw stones at you." They would knock you, throw stones at you, knock you in the head till you came unconscious, and then you fall faint and die mm -hmm. from the stones that were thrown, but nobody would really see you. So they wanted to hang him up high. Mm -hmm. And they wanted everybody in the whole world to see mm -hmm. that he was being crucified, mm -hmm. that Jesus was going to die, and he was going to be no more mm -hmm. in their mind. Mm -hmm. They thought. Amen. Okay? Uh, Jesus died for the sins of the world. Scripture talks about uh, people perishing because of a lack of knowledge. Uh -huh. And those folks were definitely ignorant. Okay, when they was hanging Jesus Christ on the cross, see, it was ordained that it happened like that. Mm -hmm. See, we have to go through hell and high water. That's part of our journey. Ah. And we have to fight on the way there because that's part of our journey. It's ordained. It's a prerequisite that we go through that. I learned that the hard way, okay, because whenever I had a question, I look in the Bible, okay, and I ask God, and, and, and it, it tells me, you know, like when you look back and you say to yourself, well, why did this have to happen? And then God will present a scripture to you. If you were being obedient to the word of God, God is pleased with you. Mm -hmm. You know, like for your mother uh, may have done wrong against you. My mother was a sinner. Mm -hmm. Okay, she died a sinner. She actually was a mason. She, she, she professed the devil out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said she was going to do all the evil she could do so she could live a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. and um, so when I asked the Lord, I said, well, Lord, why did you allow me to go through all of that hell and I water in her care? Mm -hmm. He said, because you honored that mother and that father. And thy days shall be long upon the face of the earth. Mm. See, he reminds you of the scripture that pertains to your situation. You being obedient to God's word, you will reap the rewards of what God has for you. Amen. Okay, no matter what kind of hell and hot water you're going through, the enemy thinks that he can persecute you and he can do all kind of evil against you and they get rid of you. Like they thought they got rid of Jesus. But see, they can't get rid of us. Oh, death, where's that sting? Oh, grave, where? It's not victory, okay? They cannot take us out because our soul belongs to God, just like it was with Lazarus. Uh, what would uh, the other character remember? And okay, so a couple of characters. Now, there are blessings in forgiveness. Okay, and I'm not going to be before you long, but I just would like to point these out. We ask God for forgive, to forgive them for they know not what they do because we are being obedient to the word of God, as I said before. <clears throat> but by being forgiven of our sins means that we now have the opportunity to begin again. God gives us a second chance at life. <laughs> Believe it or not, when you're forgiven of your sins, okay? When you get sick and tired of getting sick and tired, then you're going to get down on your knees and you're going to ask God, Lord, I'm tired of the sin that I'm in and I need you to come and intercede. Please help me. Give me another chance, okay? And we cannot be ashamed of that, okay? Because there will be shame that will come with it. The enemy wants us to be ashamed of what they do to us, you know, because then that they feel that they have control over us. All the hell and hot water that you've been through going up and whatnot, now you're shame of that. You know, we need to embrace because that is our power that gives us the ability to say, hey, look where God brought me from. You know, I've been through hell and hot water. They almost tried to kill me. You know, they choked me. They ran over me with a car. They did all of this, blah, 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 blah. But look at what God did, baby. I'm here. 
Come on. Okay, and the devil can't touch me. Why? Because I'm a child of God and he can't touch you. Okay? Now Jacob and Esau made peace with each other. They were in forgiveness at one time. I don't know if you know the story, but it's found in the book of Genesis 25, where Esau sells his birthright for a bowl of soup. In the book of Genesis 27.1, he talks about Jacob tricked his father into believing that he was his brother Esau and stole Esau's blessing. But in the book of Genesis 33, Jacob sought forgiveness and Esau forgave Jacob. Here he was living in unforgiveness all of this time. He thought that his brother was going to kill him because his brother said, when I see you again, I'm going to get you. And he is living in fear because he's like, and that's a lie of the devil. Fear is a spirit. And if we get fear is a spirit, we can tell it to go. See, that's the power that God gives us. We don't realize we have power over the devil. He tricks us up here. And then he try, tries to get us in here. But we can open up our mouth. And profess whatever it is that the word of God has to say. Oh, Devil, you ain't gonna win over me. You're not gonna cause me to have Come unforgiveness on. over my enemy. I'm not gonna be having no grudge over nobody so that I can end up in hell under you. Because I know you're a liar. Preach up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Preach it. Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau, and you know the story, I'm not gonna read the scripture. But uh they finally made peace with each other. They actually bowed down to one another, let them know, hey, I forgave you a long time ago. Mm. You know, I didn't hold no grudge against you. We were children back then. Our mama put us up to that mess. Okay, that wasn't my decision to do. That was my mama's, you know, and so it ran in the family, you know. <laughs> it was all trifling, okay? But the sons made peace. They changed things. And it, it, it has to start with you or me. Then that's where it has to start with. And we are the ones that are going to start changing things. Just like you go on a job. You know the people are going to pick on you because you're a Christian. You're not, you don't want to do what they ask you to do. But we're not there for a paycheck necessarily, and don't get me wrong. But we're there to minister to those, to be a blessing to those that are there. That's what our main purpose is, okay, because we are representing Jesus Christ. Okay, you want to do something to me? I'm going to minister to you. I'm gonna, I call them healing words. Okay, when somebody's trifling and whatnot, I say, oh, you're good at that. Or I like what you do and whatnot. I may not like it at all. But I'll say it because I know that it's a healing word. And it'll turn their mind around and whatnot and get it off of me. <laughs> okay? Now the story of Joseph and his brothers. We know the story of Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was uh, the first biological son of his father. But God had told him already he was going to have some children. And he wouldn't listen to his wife and did a disturbing practice that I still don't understand how they allowed to go on when he had sex with his maids. And they, had, they gave birth to babies, okay? And all every last one of them was trifling, okay? And then here Joseph was born, and his father loved him more than he loved the others because he was his biological son, born of his mother and his father. And then they wanted to kill the boy because he had a dream. How many of y'all have a dream today? Okay? You dream of, of things, you have dreams. Sometimes it's, it goes way beyond what you ever have seen in your life. But God says, eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard and the entered into the mind of those who love him. Okay, that's why I say God is a powerful God. He's a mighty powerful God and he can do anything but fail. You can be in any situation or circumstance that could be completely the opposite of what you're going through. Or you could be living in sin for all of your life and all of a sudden, you know, you just say, Lord, I need you. I need your help. Please get me up out of this. Help me to forgive so that I can move on with my life. Because people will do you wrong. As long as there's a devil, there's always a God, but there's always going to be people who's going to uh, persecute us. So then, as a result of that, now, if I believe that if uh, Joseph's father had listened to God and waited on him, then he wouldn't, then, uh, Joseph would not have uh, been, um, they wouldn't have tried to kill him, and he wouldn't have been in, in prison for all those years. But because his father sinned, now Joseph had to deal with sin. Okay, not Joseph, Joseph didn't have to suffer for the sins of his father, Joseph had to suffer with sin because his father presented sin within the family. And I, that's the way it goes. My mother was a sinner so that I had to struggle with sin. Okay? That's the way it goes. That's the, the Bible. I don't know what scripture that is, but it's in there. Okay? And then they tried to kill uh, um, uh, Joseph because he had a truth. He had a vision that was given to him by God himself. Amen. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, I know we all have dreams. Embrace your dream. Embrace what's going on up here. Don't deny it. Because it is God talking to you and telling you trying to move you into your destiny into your next level. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to work at it. It's one step at a time. Okay? One day at a time. And I don't care how long it takes for you to get there. Do not let that devil turn you around. Mm -hmm. 
and to stray you from God, what God has for you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care where you are with your money, your money funny, your change strange. God said he will make a way and he'll make a way. Okay, it's God will make you this favor. We'll, we'll do things that nobody else can do. That's why He's a powerful and mighty God, and you can do anything but fail. Okay, I'm a living witness to that, and I ain't even talking about money. Okay, now when they, they tried to kill him, they sent him, they sold him to the slave masters. He went to jail. Okay, then they saw that he had a skill, so they sent him into Potiphar's house, and he worked for Potiphar. His wife wanted him because he was an attractive man. But Joseph was loyal to God, and he said, no, shall I, you know, I'm not going to betray my God for you. You know, he could have easily advanced his career, but then he would have been going to him. Okay, he was loyal to God because he knew that God was his refuge and his strength. So he, uh, he ended up going back to jail again because he, uh, the woman falsely accused him of rape. So he's in jail now, and he tells him, he said, don't forget about me when you go out. He actually uh, interpreted two dreams. One of them, I wouldn't have wanted nobody to interpret my dream if I found I was going to get impaled on a pole, okay? <laughs> but he had uh, interpreted the dreams, and when he, they finally remembered him, he got out, and he interpreted the dream, okay? And he became instantly, he came, went from two-time criminal to uh, second in command of a city. Come on, somebody, talk to me up in here. Don't right tell me now. my God can't do it all. Ah, don't tell me he can't do everything but fail, okay? Yes. Okay, don't think of yourself as a low life or low down at the totem pole, baby. We are children of God. We are heirs of salvation. We are in his will. Yes. Okay, he died for that. All right. Okay, the, 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 the wealth of the of wicked is being stored up for the righteous. Uh -huh. And that's me, and that's you. All right. All right. Okay, um, and so Joseph was able to forgive them. Joseph loved his family, okay? Um, but they didn't realize it because they were so trifling. They were so busy thinking about uh, mischief, okay? That they didn't have room in their hearts and their minds for, the, for God, okay? But uh, Joseph was a godly man, and, and he guarded his heart and his mind, and he kept his mind stayed on Jesus, okay? Even though he was in jail, <clears throat> he still did not give up on his God, and God did not give up on him, mm -hmm. okay? So when he came out of jail, he's in second command, and when he met up with his brothers, First, their brothers didn't recognize him. He was hiding himself. And when he finally revealed himself to his brothers, they said, you forgive us after what we did to you? And he said, you meant it for harm, but God meant it for good. Come on, somebody talk to me. Okay, and that's the way it always works. Say that to yourself every time somebody do something wrong to you. Because God always uses trials and tribulations to bring about triumph and victory in our lives. It looks like you're going down for the count, baby. The referee is counting you out. One, two, three. And when he gets to nine, we're going to rise right back up, baby. Come out fighting, just like we did before. Okay? Now, there are, we must forgive ourselves as well. Okay? We must learn how to forgive ourselves. Because sometimes we end up beating ourselves up for the things that we thought we've done or that we blame ourselves for. Oh, we could have done this better or that could have been done better. But don't, don't beat yourself up. Because if God can wipe away our sin, then surely we should be able to forget as well. <clears throat> okay? You can read Colossians 1, 11 to 14 for reference for that. But how to forgive yourself is the person, uh, our, we are the hardest person to forgive is ourselves. Because I have found myself incarcerating myself for, uh, for, the, uh, um, for the bad that had happened to me in the past. I would stay home. I wouldn't go nowhere. I wouldn't enjoy life. Because I was you know, punishing myself for what they had done to me. You know, and I said, Lord, I said, you know what? And then I said a prayer. I said, Lord, I, I pray that the sin that, that they had committed against you, let it die with them and be buried in their grave. Because I am not going to allow them, I'm not going to continue their legacy. They may have tried to kill me, but I'm not going to let them. I'm not going to kill myself and then end up letting them get away with what they were trying to do. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times we end up continuing what the enemy did to us and, let, and, and, and uh, finishing the job and then end up in hell right along with them. Okay? Um, hurting people hurt people. Okay? And if, you are, if you're suffering as a slave to righteousness, You'll be you're pleased in the sight of God. God is pleased with you. That means we are in his will. And he still answers prayer. Okay? Uh, first, we need to let go of the guilt uh, that we're feeling within us. Okay? We let go of the guilt as we feel as a result of the hurt that was imposed upon us by the perpetrator. Also, stop thinking about the hurt and think about the ways of how you want the healing to occur. Okay? We have to sometimes be our own doctor. But how many of you know God is the best doctor in town? Okay? We are doing a great damage to ourselves by letting, we're, I mean, we're doing a great, uh, we're helping ourselves by getting rid of the guilt. 
Okay, we blame ourselves and take responsibility for the enemy's actions and their sins. Okay, and someone could be the person that you love that they betrayed you to the extent where you didn't even expect it. Okay, even though we were not at fault, we still feel ashamed and we carry that shame around like a ball on a chain. Okay, among us, back and forth, and people can see that. They can see the way that they show up with that on our shoulders. You know, the way we talk, the way we act, you know, the way we look down, we could our, we our head and our shoulders and stuff. You know, our, our uh, low self-esteem, that's definitely exhibited there. You know, um, and, but don't take a trip down the guilty lane because the guilt is ruling your life and keeping you from making a positive change and keeping God from moving in your life. Okay, next we need to have mercy. We need to uh, see ourselves as being a very lovable person. Imagine yourself as a person that you really want to be. Okay, we are compassionate and forgiving individuals and we are kind and understanding individuals. That's what God wants us to be and that's what we are. And if you proclaim it out of your mouth, then that's what you'll be. If you proclaim defeat out of your mouth, then you will be defeated. If you proclaim victory out of your mouth, then you will be victorious. Okay? It's important to forgive ourselves because we restore the wandering believers. The tendency for us to blame ourselves for past hurts and to hold on to past hurts is a lot longer than we should. A lot of times we blame ourselves for what the enemy has done, thinking that it was our fault that we caused it to happen. But God forgives all equally, and it wasn't your fault. You did nothing to cause it to happen. And you can refer to James 5, 19, 20 for that. Yes. God remembers a sin no more. You can read Jeremiah 31, 34 and Acts 10, 34 for reference to that. Okay, but this does not mean that the all-knowing Father God forgets, but rather he forgives us. He chooses not to bring up our sin in a negative way or hold it against us. Okay, uh, forgiving ourselves is a personal action, and it's a, it starts with the mouthpiece. You come out your mouth and you'll say, I forgive myself. And you ask the Lord if you don't know how. You ask, the, ask God, Lord, will you teach me how to forgive? How to forgive and forget? How to give it to you so that I will no longer carry around the burden of the guilt of what they've done to me in the past. It's over. It's done. And I want it to be finished. And you just ask the Lord to do it. And the more you ask him, and then you, then you cast out those evil spirits. And you tell fear, get out. Uh, worry, get out. Unforgiveness, go in the name of Jesus now. You know, I have a spot in my bedroom that I go to pray. I have a bunch of scriptures and stuff that I type up and I paste it on the wall. And that's the spot that I go to every time when I really want to get in prayer with the Lord. So I believe that the Lord welcomes me there. He knows to meet me there. Amen. And when I pray there, I go, to, I go to that spot. And I ask the Lord, with anything I want to ask him, anywhere in the house really, but I go there because that's my, my place that I really need God to work in my life. And I said, God, I said, God, I'm not going to stop asking you until you bless me. <laughs> I'm going to keep on bugging you and asking you. I don't care. I'm just going to keep on saying, I'm going to remind you of your word, what you said, and what I'm doing, and how obedient I am until you bless me. Okay? Because I need to be able to forgive my enemies and completely forget what they've done to me. Now, life is full of choices. We all know that. <clears throat> That's why Jesus died on the cross. Because he wants to give us the ability to make a choice. Okay, now you have a choice as to what before he died on the cross, we were all, uh, I said they were, we were uh, Christians at that time, didn't have a choice. They were forced into submission to sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, he, uh, it, was, it was ordained that he would do that. And he uh, also, uh, he gave us a choice now. We have a choice whether we want to serve him or not. And some people, surprisingly enough, they will not choose God no matter how much stuff they go through. They could be on their dying bed. They can have all kinds of diseases, and they will not believe the word of God. They will not trust in God at all. They will not, for once, figure that maybe you might be right. There might be another way to do this. But one of the things that gives me comfort in knowing when I ask the Lord to forgive my enemy for what they've done to me is that God's words promises that vengeance and recompense is mine. Okay, so we don't have to worry about getting the enemy back for what they did. Because when Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, they said, you forgive us for what we did? And they held that guilt in them, inside of them. They was guilty the whole time. They were scared that he was going to do something to them. And they was like, oh, he just, uh, and then when their father died, he said, oh, he was just uh, preserving us until our father died. And now he's going to get us. See, they, they, they guilt that was killing them. So we ain't got to do nothing to them because they're going to eat themselves up with guilt and everything like that. So, you know, in Romans 12, 19, 21, you can refer to that. It says, you know, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. 
For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. But do not overcome evil with good. Overcome, I mean, do not overcome evil. Do not overcome evil. Be overcome evil with good. Okay, so, I mean, it's very difficult, though, for you to forgive people. I know it is, especially when they catch you off guard. And you at least expect they come at you from left field. And you just said something or done something that you don't regret. And you got to go on your knees and you got to fast and, and pray and ask the Lord, please, God, please, 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 please forgive me. Because I did, did not mean to do that. Okay, and Amen. Romans uh, 2, you can refer to that as well. Uh, 7 to 9. Okay, um, now there's healing and forgiveness. Okay, first of all, we're being obedient to the word of God, so God is pleased with our actions. You, and he will answer our yes. prayer. Yes. Okay, um, Job 33, 14, I'm going to read this scripture and I'm going to conclude with that. Amen. Because I love this scripture here. It talks about, uh, there's healing and forgiveness. Actually, there's spiritual healing as well as physical healing. Okay, your body will become better. You will begin to feel, you know, your, your body being restored from whatever it was that you were dealing with. When you begin to forgive. Okay, and I'm just going to read this uh, scripture, Job 33, 14, 28, and I'm going to conclude with that. It says, For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams and visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn from doing wrong. He keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Or God disciplines people with pain in their sick beds, with ceaseless aching in their bones. They lose their appetite for even the most delicious food. Their flesh wastes away and their bones stick out. They are at death's door and the angels of death wait for them. But if an angel from heaven appears, a special message to intercede for a person and declare that he is upright, then he will be gracious and say, rescue him from the grave, for I have found ransom for his life. This is the, uh, then his body will become healthy as a child's, firm and youthful again. Then he prays to God and he will be accepted. And God will receive him with joy and restore him to good standing. And he will declare to his friends, I have sinned and twisted the truth, but it was not worth it. God rescued me from the grave and now my life is filled with light. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I love it because Jesus never failed to have a teaching moment. Here he dying on the cross and he used that for a teaching moment. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. I can elaborate a little bit more, but we got six six more speakers to go, and hallelujah, we're trying to give everyone as much time as the Lord would allow them to share with us what the Lord has placed in their spirit. Uh, Pastor Rochelle and I had a conversation. <laughs> it's between her and myself, <laughs> but I was almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So we honor the Lord today, and our next speaker, Lord be to God, will be none other than, uh, let me find my paper. <coughs> Minister Sabrina, a great woman of God, and she's going to come with us, a great anointed woman of God, all of our women. Uh, anointed, but she's going to come and share with us from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 43rd verse. Verily I say unto thee, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Let us receive her as she come at this time. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto him, 
Verily I say unto thee, to, to this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Um, I really didn't study on this because I had called Apostle Gravely and I told her that I was going to back out <laughs> because I had been um, going through some stuff all month and you know how sometimes you go through things and you just can't get things the way you want it to be and um, she just told me you know do the best I can do with my testimony so as I was going just thinking about what I can do, and I went to sleep, and um, Apostle Gray got seen you in the dream. <laughs> and, um, and when I seen you in this dream, I was like, okay, what is this for now? Okay. So I guess the dream was just telling you, was telling me to go ahead and do the best you can do. Praise you know, like, Reverend, you like my pastor, Reverend Thompson yes. always tells us, yes. you know, don't worry about it, let exactly. go on that guy. Come on down. So, as I was thinking about this, I said, Lord, I don't know. You know why I go through the things that I go through? Why things happen to me the way they happen to me? Because God has a place set up for me in paradise. Amen. And that place that he has set up for me in paradise is nothing nobody can do. Nobody can stop me from getting to where God wants me to be. Nobody can stop me from going to where God wants me to go. But that place for me is for me. And I thank God for that place. Because sometimes you get, um, like right now where I'm at, it seemed like I was put in a place where I was like set up. Mm. But God said that's all right. Mm -hmm. He said because you probably set up because you're going to be set, set back because you set up, but you're going to be moved out of that place. Because I have a better place for you. I have a place where I put you to be. I have a place where I know that you're going to be filled, you're going to be safe, you're going to be comfortable. He said well, that's all right, just sit there and don't worry about it. You know, because sometimes the enemy start getting in your head trying to make you think that you ain't going to make it. You know, that you, the things that you go through, there's nobody there for you, but I know who my God is. And I know that I can make it. And, you know, I don't, I don't worry about it no more. A lot of things I used to worry about, I don't worry about no more. That's why when I read the scripture and started thinking about the things in paradise, and I started asking God... <coughs> God, why me? He says, you're my child. He says, so you're going to have to go through some things in order to come out of some things. Amen. And every day I wake up and I'm crying. But God says, it's all right. Because you're going, to, you're going to cry sometime. You're going to share some tears. But it's all right. You know? And I said, when I, when I look back over my life and see where, I, where God has brought me from and the things that I went through to get where I am today, I know that I know that I know that I know that it's nobody but God that done this for me. I know that I know that it's nobody but God that kept me. Because the things that I've done and I came this far, I know it was nobody but God. Because had not it been for God, where would I be? You know, and I think about it all the time. I tell it, I say now, I will put nobody before God because God is my all in all. He's my everything. And he keeps me going every day. And I thank God for that. And I'm just coming to y'all because this is, I'm just coming to y'all on what I'm feeling right now. Oh, you know, yeah. It may not be right. what the scripture is telling me. This is just the way I feel right now because of my trials, my tribulations, the things that I've been going through all month. Right. And I'm thinking God for bringing me out of this. Yeah. You know, because sometimes I want, I, sometimes I, want to, I want to give up, but I don't give up. And I sit, in, I sit in my house by myself and I go through these things. I don't even call. And I, when I call and I talk to my mother, she says, Sabrina, if you're going through stuff, you need to tell them. But sometimes you don't even want to talk to nobody Amen. about it. Because you don't want to talk to nobody but God. Right. You know? And you don't want to worry other people. Because everybody is not for you. Right. And that's one thing you've got to learn, too. You can't talk to everybody about right. your problems that's and your right. situations. Right. Because they'll prey on you. And they'll make it even worse for you. Mm -hmm. But I just thank God because of the place he has for me in paradise. Yeah. I do. I thank God mm -hmm. for that. And I can't wait to get to that place. And when I get to that place, my Lord, my God, I'm going to put on my shouting shoes. And I'm going to shout all over that paradise. I'm going to give him the glory. I'm going to shout so hard that when I shout, I'm taking somebody with me. Come on. And that person who I take with me is going to be somebody that's going to be filled, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because of who I am and what I am. And I thank God for that. You know, 
I thank God, like I said, I thank God so much for my aunt. Although she's not here, and I still thank God for her because she put in us so much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to hear, but it was the truth. <laughs> if she didn't care how you felt about it, she told you. And I thank God for that. Yes. Also thank God for my mother because a lot of times I didn't want to go to church, but I went anyway. Yeah. You know? I thank God for my aunt just sitting out there. I used to get mad at her too, but I love her anyhow. <laughs> you know, but it's all right because all those people that was put in my life is for a reason, yeah. a special reason, yeah. and I thank God for it. So I know I, I, I I'm not um, here to do what was placed what was placed in my heart to do. I'm, I was just here to do what God placed on my heart to do. Oh, I'm just asking y'all to know two words of prayer. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I also say let Jesus lead you. Hallelujah. All the way. Amen. Yes. Praise God. And even with these particular verses of scripture, Jesus is still taking a moment out of his dying to bless somebody. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Billy, I say again, amen. Billy, I say unto thee, today shall thou be with me in paradise. He was talking to the thief that was on the cross. Amen. Glory be to God. There were two thieves. One thief mocked him, along with the centurion soldiers. But the thief that was on the right side of Jesus, he knew that he had sinned. And so therefore, he trusted and had enough faith in God through his son, Jesus Christ. Yep. All he asked was, Lord, remember me. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, remember me. That's all he asked for. Yes. But Jesus had other plans for him. Yes. He said, today, today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And a lot of times we can ask God for one thing. But God. God will set you up to be blessed. Am I right about that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for these scriptures on today. It allow us to see that whenever Jesus was doing anything, he always reached out to the people of God. Amen. To be a blessing to the people of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we just thank God again. And our next speaker would be Pastor Dillis Wall. And her scripture is going to come from the gospel according to St. John, the second chapter, from the first and eleventh verse. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. Amen. Let us receive her as she come at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Coming from John chapter 19, verse 26. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, look at all the mothers out here. Amen. Amen. So this scripture shall identify with each and every one of us Amen. who are mothers. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, there was no uh, ordinary relationship between a mother and a son. This was a divine relationship yes. orchestrated by God Almighty Himself. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. I want to read this scripture first, then I will go on and elaborate on it. 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, Behold your son. Amen. 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 Praise God. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Like I said, this was no ordinary relationship. Amen. Amen. This mother and her son had a divine relationship. Yes. A yes. godly relationship yes. with each other. Yes. Yes. See, not too many mothers yes. out there have a divine and a godly relationship with their children. Amen? But here, God had ordained them. He has appointed them to, to such as a time like this. Amen? Praise God. As you know that Mary was the, is the mother of Jesus. Amen? 
Even when Jesus was hanging on that cross, he had he, he had to think about his mother. Amen. That's just go and show how much love Jesus had. Oh, hallelujah. Because he had a godly love. Amen. Amen. Mary, his mother, was faithful. You know, you know how we mothers are. Amen. 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 I'm glad about the relationship I had with my children. Amen. Everybody can say that. Amen. But I thank God for it. That was because we have something in common. And what we have in common is our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we have in common. I know the mothers out there sitting out there right now today what, do not want your daughter or son be lost. Because you know time is winding up. You want your children to be saved and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary now stood there by the cross of Jesus. His mother. He said unto his mother, Behold your son. Jesus is placing the care of his mother Mary into the hands of John the Beloved. He didn't place Mary and his mother in anybody's hands. Because you truly love your mother, you're going to make sure your mother is taken care of. Because you know that you know that your time is winding up. You hear me right now today, I see a lot of mothers in the nursing home. Amen. Amen. And sometimes they lonely and sometimes the children have forgotten about yeah. them. They are not a loving son or daughter. They are selfish. They don't have the spirit of Jesus Christ in them. John the Beloved who is one of his disciples. Imagine right now the suffering she must have endured yes. as she watched what is happening to her son. She felt the hurt, the suffering her son was enduring for the whole world. Amen? Amen. See, our son and our daughter can't die for the whole world. Amen? Amen. Because we are not perfect, amen? amen. But this is God in the flesh. Yes. Yes. They came down here on earth yes. to die and suffer for our sins. Yes. Yeah. Felt the hurt her son was enduring that was beyond her comprehension. She couldn't do anything. She could have said, son, come down from that cross. But she felt the hurt and the pain. Her heart was stabbed with a dagger. My God, my God. We don't want to see none of our children going through because as a mother, we love them unconditionally. Yes, yes. And Mary loved her son unconditionally. And yet as a mother, she was very grieved in her heart. In her heart, spirit, and soul. Mary is known in the Catholic religion even down through history as a mother of God. As an intercessor between Jesus and man. Amen. His mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was God appointed. Amen. Amen. Yes. She was she found favor with God. Yes. When Jesus was talking to his mother Mary and John, the beloved, he used the term woman. Not as an expression of coldness, but as rather as a title of endearment and honor. Amen. Woman. <laughs> Woman. Yes. I adore you. I honor you because you is my mother and you are a woman created by God. Amen. 
They're standing at the foot of the cross being faithful to Jesus. Until the very end was his mother Mary. Mary and also the other Marys. Mary, the wife of Cle Cleopas. Mary, sister, also was there, named Maria. And Mary Magdalene, my God. What a miracle that Jesus has performed. When he met this woman named Mary Magdalene, who has seven demons in her. Amen. You just go to show the loving heart and the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has. Right. For us. Amen. Mary Magdalene was not a relative of the others. But she was the one of whom Jesus cast out seven demons mm -hmm. out of her. She became one of the women who followed Jesus' ministry to the resurrection. I want to follow this man for the rest of my life. Because now the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that he is the Messiah. Yes. That he is the Son of God. Yes. And I'm going to follow him all the days of my life. And that's how I feel even though I'm in this situation now. But I'm going to follow Jesus all the days of my life. Devil, get behind me. My God. My God. There's Mary Magdalene. My God. What a miracle. What a miracle. So many people are full with demons even right now today. Well, they don't have the power and authority to cast it out like Jesus did. My God. My God. They don't. They don't have the anointing. That's why we had to ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Use me, Lord, to cast that demon out of that person. My God. Jesus was concerned about his mother, as we can see, the love and compassion towards the care of his mother. He put the care of his mother into the hands of his disciple, John, the beloved. Behold your mother, he told John, that from that moment on, he was to look at Mary exactly as his own mother. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful you can find someone? Mm -hmm. It said, behold your mother. That you could put your mother into another, trust another person mm -hmm. to take care of your mother. Yes. That's a gift. From, that's wonderful. It is. Not too many people want to take up that responsibility. Yes. But John the Beloved was glad to take that responsibility that Jesus Christ was on the cross and said, Behold that mother. Yes. My yes. God. Into the hands of his disciple, John the Beloved. Behold your mother. He told John that from that moment on, he was to look at Mary exactly as his own mother. And John did just as so by taking Mary into his own home. Shortly after the resurrection, Jesus would appear. To his half, Jesus will appear to his half brother James, who finally accepted Jesus as the savior of mankind. Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. We know that Mary birthed Jesus, but we as believers know that he came from God. He is part of the Blessed Trinity. As Jesus, at Jesus' birth, his destiny was sealed to become a suffering Messiah for the world. Jesus knew that when he started his ministry, that he was called to do the will of his Father, and he was obedient. Amen. 
We as minister of the gospel, as pastor, as apostle, as evangelist, as missionary, as born begin believers, we are called to be obedient and to do the will of our Amen. Father in heaven. Amen. When Jesus was arrested, both of his disciples fled. Amen? Afraid that they too might be arrested <laughs> while associated themselves with him. The women who were following <laughs> Jesus decided to be faithful, courageous, and strong. Amen. Even they knew that life was in danger. Amen? Amen. But they were determined to follow Jesus Christ yes. anyway. Yes. Because they knew he was no ordinary man. Amen. They knew he was a son of God. Yes. They knew that he had something special about Amen. him. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve, yes. I tell yes. you. Amen. He's a mighty, mighty, yes. mighty yes. God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The woman who were following Jesus decided to be faithful, courageous, and strong. Jesus returned to his glory at the Son of God. Have you ever seen God glory? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. I waited to see the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. They say when you see Jesus' glory, you can't look at it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus Christ's glory is so bright. It's so blind that it will blind your eyes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. That's what's missing in the church today. We need to see the glory of God moving, moving in the church, I tell you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. That's why we have to shout. We have to shout, 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 glory, hallelujah. My God. Amen. According to the New Testament, mm -hmm. he was not only a man, he was God's son in the flesh. The shed blood of Jesus Christ. And one faith in that blood is the only payment for our sin that God will accept. Money he won't accept, no payment, but only the blood the blood of Jesus. Yes, the yes. blood that he shed on Calvary cross. Yes, yes. The blood that was running down. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Thank there's you. power, there's power. 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 Holy Ghost power, power in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Power, power, power. power. Jesus, Jesus. The shed blood of Jesus Christ and one faith in that blood. It's the only payment for mankind's sin that God would accept. It's not only the cross which brings about our salvation. It's a, it is the cross alone which brings about our sanctification. Yes. The cross of Christ is the object of our faith. The blood of Christ speaks much better things than the blood of of an animal sacrifice. But well, we know an animal sacrifice, their blood cannot save us. Amen? Only in the blood of Jesus can save our soul. Amen? Praise God. The only way you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God and confess your sins. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You can't enter to heaven any other way. Mm -hmm. Only by our Lord, Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is a perfect sacrifice without spots, without blemish or wrinkles. There is power in the blood. Grace saving is in the blood. Yes. Healing is in the blood. Yes. And most of all, salvation for our soul is in the blood of Jesus. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for Pastor Dillard yes. Wall yes. sharing with us on today. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. Can't you just know that Jesus felt what his mother was going through? Yes. And he yes. saw and had that compassion on her. Yes. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine being a mother and seeing your son carry that cross hmm. down the Della Rosa Road, <laughs> being whipped, hmm. nails being put in your hands hmm. and in your feet? Hmm. Hmm. Jesus saw all of that. Amen. And he did not want to leave his mother alone. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So he willed John to his mother. Mm -hmm. And then he willed his mother to John. Mm -hmm. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. I say, what a mighty God we Amen. serve. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. And now at this time, our fourth speaker, Evangelist Mildred Smith. She's going to speak on, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Yeah. I know it was blood. I know it was blood. And the 27th chapter. I know it was the blood. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Amen. For me, yes. one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. They nailed him to the cross. is going to be from Matthew 27 46 Amen. Get glasses on. <clears throat> oh thank you Jesus and also this is the pre part of it okay and you can turn to it if you want to and you don't have to because I have it it's, <clears throat> it's the 22nd chapter of Psalms and verse 1. Say, My God, my God, 
Why have I forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my ruling. Okay, now I'm going to <clears throat> read this and I'm going to read it fast. I'm going to try to repeat the time because I know there's others has to come behind me. <clears throat> and I'm going to start at Isaiah chapter 53. Say, who have believed our report? And to him is the arm of the Lord revealed. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. And who have no farm nor countenance, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of me. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as his work our faces from him. He was despised, and we extinct him not. Surely he has borne our sorrows, our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we extinct him stricken. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Is that all we like sheep have gone astray? Everyone has turned and gone to his own way. To his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb before the slaughter and as a sheep before her shield. He was dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Thank you, Jesus. And one more verse out of that. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to the right. I just wanted to do that because of the title of my sermon. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And the 46th verse in the 27th chapter says, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, said, Eli, Eli, Lamba, set back of thine own. This is to say, my God, my God, my God, why have thou, why have thou forsaken me? Oh God, why have you forsaken me? But I want to tell you something. That Jesus wasn't forsaken. Because he had God on the inside of him. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And how could he be forsaken when he had God on the inside of him? And even David said in the 22nd chapter and verse 1, mm -hmm. Why have I forsaken why are you so far from my groaning? Mm -hmm. From my groaning? From my moaning? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus knows. He knows all about our suffering. Yes. He knows all about our groaning. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. And when he was in the garden, he felt it on him. Our suffering came on him. It came on him so bad that he began to sweat. And his sweat was so thick as it was blood. The blood. The blood. The blood that run down his veins. The blood that run down his veins. Water run out of his veins. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. Why has thy forsaken me? He fell forsaken because the things that I read to you, hallelujah, on a short turn in Isaiah, Isaiah 53, I read it to you already. It pleased God. It pleased God to afflict him. Thank you, Jesus. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Can't you feel it in your veins? Can't you feel it in your veins? Believe on the Son of God. Hallelujah. He felt like his father forsaken him. And he didn't say, Father, Father, why have that forsaken me? But he said, God. Even his father, he ordered him as God. And he said, my God, he ordered him as his own God. My God, my God, why have I forsaken you? I'm right here with you. And so he sent an angel, hallelujah. God sent an angel to comfort him. God sent an angel to strengthen him. Yeah, yeah. Like he said, the angels of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him. All taste and see that the Lord is good. And you know what? He might have said that because he was in the flesh. He was in the fleshly body just like we are. And if somebody shoots your son, your son why did you shoot me? But God did afflict him. He did afflict him. But he done it all for us. It's about God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. might be sick. But you know, in another scripture, in John, Jesus said, you are not taking my life from me, for I laid it down. I laid it down. And he said to his father, nevertheless, not my will, Lord, not my will, Father, but thy will be done. Thy will be yes, done. Yes. Thy will be done. Yes. In earth as it is Come on. in heaven. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. He's so wonderful. Yes. He's so wonderful. And like in that seventh chapter, about I, in that seventh verse of the 53rd chapter, it said that Jesus didn't say nothing. So where do the seven last words come from? When it said he was like a, a lamb before the sun. They said, we said, we are like that too. We are like a lamb before the sun. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Jesus loved us. Hallelujah. And we feel forsaken. That's just a natural or normal feeling. Or if someone do something that hurts you, when you know all you done is good for them. Have you ever had a good friend to betray you? Yeah. Oh God. And father, his father, he had never been separated from. Never been separated from. 
but one thing nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing in this world or in the world to come can separate us from the love of Christ. I just want to read this little stuff to you. I wanted to let you know where I came from, that I know that he had to forsaken for a moment for us because he was a sacrifice. He was sacrificed. He was offered for us. Yes. Like they, Moses and him. They used to offer lambs and sheep and goats and pigeons yes. and turtles and things like that. The poor people couldn't afford nothing but the turtle doves, you know, and the pigeons. Because that's what Jesus' parents offered when he was born because they were the poor people. But the rich people, they could do the animal sacrifices, you know. But they didn't take away sin because they still felt guilty. Oh, Jesus. But when Jesus take away your sin, you shouldn't feel guilty in the moment. He is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. Remember when Abraham gave his son and he, he was really going to kill his son, you know? But God had a ram in the bush. Oh, glory to God. Now, Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to his name. Any good? Yes. Hallelujah. He's so good. And okay, there was some language problems. People were Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. And that's why some things sound different. And it don't sound the same, but it is the same. Because if you're a different nationality, well, it's going to sound different. That's how that may recognize Peter. Yes. Say, you one of them. <laughs> and Peter said, no, I ain't now one of them. <laughs> and he said it three times. No, I don't know him. <laughs> but I'm going to say, do you know him? Do you know him? Jesus Christ, God, son. The one that fell forsaken for you and me. The one who God forsaken for you and me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I counted the words in my verse. And there was more than seven. There was nine words in my verse. Oh, glory to God. Nine. And count the ones that's in the verse that you chose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it's more than that. But only, only what you do for Christ will last. The same Jesus that they crucified, died and buried. He rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Some people think he's still in the grave. But he rose because the scripture that the pastor read, the apostle and the pastor, said the 28th chapter. Yes. The 28th chapter of Matthew. You know. Right in there, in the beginning of the Sabbath, said, as it be done to us the first day we came Mary Magdalene and other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon him. So his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And so for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They was up to no good. They was watching like Pilate told them to watch. Yeah. You know. But what happened to them? They all passed out. <laughs> but Mary Magdalene and the women that was with her, they didn't pass out. But the angels say, don't fear. Jesus is not here as you think he is. <laughs> He's not here. But he has risen as he said. Go see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why have thou forsaken me? He's forsaken him for you and me when he afflicted him and let him die. Because Jesus wouldn't die because he was God. He couldn't die. But God allowed it. He sent him in that fleshly body. Yeah. And let him be born like we were born. Uh -huh. 
and this one thing Joe said, a man born off of a woman in a few days full of trouble. But I want you to know that this holy thing that Mary gave birth to had no trouble in him. Hallelujah. He wasn't full of trouble, but he was full of grace. And he was full of God. And he was full of mercy. God bless you all. God has forsaken you. Just keep on praying. Amen. amen. Praise amen. the Lord. At this time, we're going to take up our offering. And we're going to ask if you have someone, um, Pastor Sykes, to stand on behalf of the church. And um, we're going to get someone from the WMCA to stand. Amen. You gonna stand for the WCA? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, is this your offering basket? So, so oh, okay. <coughs> give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. Give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. We're going to take up one offering, if you will. And so we're going to ask that you just stand from the back and then just come right on around. The Lord will bless you if you give. Give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. Give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. Give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. And the Lord will bless you if you give. Why don't you give? Why don't you give? Why don't you give? Why don't you give? Give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. so that we can glorify your name and that we can be blessed. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you allowed us to have in the name of Jesus and allowed us to use it for, again for your glory. And these are all the blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and so may it be. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Sylvia. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have had everyone to play a part in our offering today and part no. of our Good. services. Amen. And so, at this time, we're going to continue with our speakers. We're going to sing a verse of a song. Have you heard about my Jesus? Have you heard about my Jesus? He's alright. Have you heard about my Jesus? He's alright.
shepherd of this house and all the saints of God we say to you praise the Lord yes. yeah. all right as you were told I will be speaking from John and my word is I thirst bless the name of the Lord John 19th chapter, verses 28-30a. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Verse 29, now there set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. Verse 30a says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar. I'm going to stop right there. Because my word is, I thirst. And there are ways, the ways of the world today have made drastic turns where families' lifestyles have taken them exclusively and purposely away from the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. unto salvation. Do you agree with that? Amen. When you look at families, they're split, they're going everywhere, they're doing everything, but when it comes time to come to the house of God, Everybody's got something to do. Oh Which leads me to uh, our commemoration and memorial memory of over 2,000 years ago, uh, the cross and the Calvary. Mm -hmm. And on this weekend, uh, Sister, Chris, uh, Sister Charlotte and myself, uh, we had a privilege to go out in the community and stand at a crossroad. And while we were standing there with our cross, a young man came by in his car and he said, is this the memorial for the man who died on the motorcycle? 
<laughs> Sister Charlotte and I looked at each other and we said, we don't know about uh, the man on the motorcycle, but this is a memorial. And then I began to tell him what this memorial was all about. And then he said, well, who is that? And I had to look in his eye to see if he was kidding me. <laughs> These days, we just take it for granted right. that everybody knows about Jesus. But the word hasn't got out completely about Jesus. So I'm here to tell you that I told the young man to pull over because he was stopping traffic. He pulled over and I had a chance to tell him a little bit about the plan of salvation, gave him a card and told him, we'll talk again. Wow. But listen, the world is hungry yes. and thirsty for righteousness. Yes. When will they be fed? Mm -hmm. It is up to the women and men of God to feed the people who are hungry and thirsty mm -hmm. after righteousness. Yes. When I began to explain to him all these things, he said one thing. He said, you know what? Me and my girl was talking about going to a church. Didn't know where to go. Didn't know anything about God. And those are the people that we need to be looking for in this last and evil day. Do you believe the Lord is coming back? Do you believe it? If you believe then we're going to go into the hedges and the highways and we're going to compel men and women to come to Christ. I adjure you this time next year to be in the community all year long and begin to tell people that Christ is on his way back. We don't want his going to Calvary to be in vain in our lives. So when I looked and you see uh, the scripture that I read, John 19, 28 through 30. When you look at this passage of scripture, you will find that he said the first word in verse 28 is after. Mm -hmm. After this, mm -hmm. meaning he explained and he talked and he not going to go through all the, the areas, but we talked about him saying what he said to his mother and, and forgive them and all of the stages. And then verse 28 says, now all things were accomplished. There was nothing else Jesus had to do in order uh, for the crucifixion to take place or for him to obey the scriptures. Then he said, I thirst. I wonder what did it sound like? Now, you have to remember when he was at Calvary, he went through the beatings. He was pierced in the side. He went through all of this. And they said he never said a mumbling word. And everything had been done. But now he said, I thirst. I'm wondering how powerful that statement was. Did the ground tremble? Did the sky, what happened when he said with his mouth, I thirst? Yes. The Bible says a man got uh, the vessel and he got the vinegar and put it up to his mouth. And, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering and I think in terms of many times when Jesus says something, mm -hmm. people don't get what he was really saying. He was saying it as plain as possible, but sometimes revelation was needed. And so here when he said, I thirst, my God, I'm remembering again in Ecclesiastes 3, where it says to everything, what? There is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to keep silent mm -hmm. and a time to speak. Mm -hmm. A time to love and a time to hate. Mm -hmm. Looking at these passages of scripture in John, we see the passage begin with the words after, now, and when. Those are series of time. After this, and when the vinegar was given to him. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time it was given. But then it said when which means something else is about to happen. Mm -hmm. Not something 
happened, but something is about to be said. He's not finished talking. When he said, I thirst, you need to know what was he talking about? Was it physical? Was it spiritual? What was Christ talking about? I thirst. So they offered him the vinegar. And now, it say, they said he put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he wasn't finished talking. When we look at the word resolve, that means to um, follow a course of action to get something done. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus said, I thirst, uh, it, it, it was a time and experience that will cause one to thirst for a resolution. He was on the cross and said, I thirst. When we look at the word thirst, it, it didn't just start there. I am reminded that there are three major areas in Christ's life that thirst took place. I want to take you for a minute back at the River Jordan. When Christ was, there was a, an initiation of thirst. See, the thirst just didn't start at Calvary. It started at his baptism at the River of Jordan when he allowed John the Baptist to baptize him. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I will please. Now if his father God said that to him at the initiation of the thirst, now what is he going to do next? God, Jesus began to walk through his life and at the initiation in Jordan, now he comes to thirst when he was tried in the wilderness as he was tempted of Satan. It reminded us to be silent. Mm -hmm. See, there, there was a time to be silent, but there was a time to speak. Yeah. Now here in the wilderness, it was a time to speak. Uh -huh. When Satan came upon him, time and experience will cause one to thirst for a resolution. Uh -huh. Jesus was trying to get a resolution while he was in the wilderness, and Satan came before him, and Jesus told him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not worship any other gods, and thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. This was a, an experience that caused thirst in the life of our Savior. Yeah. Now the third one was a, a a thirst that would be a thirst of testing. He was tested at Calvary. Do you believe me? Yes. Yeah. He was tested and tried at Calvary, yes. where time and experience had caused the thirst for a resolution of a different kind. The Bible has already told us in verse twenty-eight that everything had been done. Every, he, he, everything's been done. So now we're here at Calvary and Jesus is saying, I thirst. Jesus is now thirsty, not uh, for baptism, not uh, to put Satan in his place, not to remind us that we should worship no other gods but him. But he is at the cross and he said, I'm thirsty. He is saying that because uh, uh, now he's thirsty to complete his earthly visit. His mission here is near complete and he's longing to resolve the thirst that he has to go back home. He says the word I thirst. I'm imagining when he said I thirst he's remembering all the things that he's done down through the last three years of his ministry but also he's thinking about his heavenly father and how much glorious time he's going to have when he reunites with his father. He I don't know about you, but the God I serve said, I thirst. He, it wasn't a weak thirst. He said it with authority. 
and people need to look for to us yeah. for salvation yeah. to tell the gospel story yeah. and we need to have the story right yeah. he died and he rose again mm -hmm. and he said I thirst I thirst they said you know you ever been to Niagara Falls yeah. and you hear that rumbling yeah that, that, that's that's where how I uh, re recognize saying his voice sounded. Mm -hmm. When you're standing at the falls, all you hear is roar. <laughs> but I can hear our thirst coming from uh, Ooh, the Jesus uh, that we serve, that did everything that God had called him to do. And just when his thirst began, when God said, my beloved son, I'm well pleased. Uh -huh. When he died and hung his head, and he did all the things that he did, I'm trying not to get on somebody else's peace. I'm trying to stay in my lane, okay? It's hard to stay in your lane. I'm trying to be obedient. But listen, he said, I thirst. I thirst, I thirst. I've done everything, I thirst. I'm sitting here, I thirst. I'm thinking on my father in heaven. I thirst. Yes. And so now, the next person is going to carry you the rest of the way. <laughs> I thirst. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did you enjoy that word from the woman of God? Amen. Hallelujah. I thirst. Is anybody thirsty tonight? Hallelujah. He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is Evangelist Laureen Lucas here? No. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we gonna have at this time um, Elder Christine Lucas. Amen. And her saying is, it is finished. And she's going to come from John, the 19th chapter, the 30th verse. Amen. 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 And she's going to also quiet up in here. She's going to also touch on Luke, the 23rd chapter, and the 46th verse. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they go, they go together. <laughs> Amen. Ah, Luke 30. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Amen. Want me to do that one first? Amen. <coughs> uh, Y'all just pray for me today. I had um, had a rough day, mm -hmm. and uh, I had just came from a funeral before I came here, and it was someone that I know well, and we sung together, like we all sing together. Mm -hmm. So it kind of touched me a little bit. Um, so, you say Luke 24? 23rd, 23 and 46. Okay, Luke 23 and 46. I'm going to sing a little bit. You know how I do. Hey, is a musician here that can play a little bit? Awesome. Y'all raise his hand. Amen. All right. Can you play that? <laughs> Amen. Well, who was playing them? They, they laugh already? Oh, it's okay. You know, back in the days, we didn't have nothing but our hands and foot, cans, or whatever. You know, we made that kind of noise. Amen. 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 I'm going to give honor to God who is the head of my life, first of all, Ramos, and the angel of the house, and uh, our overseer, uh, Pastor Bravely, amen, and to all the ministers, elders, and other pastors, and the visitors, amen, and even the ones, my sister, I don't know if she's here, yeah, and um, Minister Howard Strong, we all are from the same church, to Bethel, amen, come here, come here, try. amen. Sing a little bit of this song. Because this is what Jesus is about. Amen. Bread of life, 
sent down from glory many things you were owner a holy king carpenter you are the living word awesome moon gentle redeemer god with us the living true and what a friend we have in you you are the living word hallelujah i just wish i had some music up in here right. amen right. and i can sing it the way i feel it amen but that's okay amen amen so we're going to luke 23 and 46 amen. amen and when jesus cried with a loud voice he said father and to thou hand I commend my spirit. And having said those, he gave up the ghost. Amen? Amen. He gave up the ghost. Jesus voluntarily gave his life over to death. Amen. At that moment, he went into the spirit and spirit and his father in heaven. Now I'm going to go ahead on to um, John. John 19. Amen. Let me get back to where I was. Like I said, it's been a, a trying day for me. Mm -hmm. We all was at the funeral today. Amen. But we know that Jesus didn't have a funeral. He just gave up the ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. My God. I'm a little distracted today. And, we, and when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Yes. It was not a cry or termination as if to say, I am finished. Mm -hmm. Rather, it was a shout of triumph, declaring the completed and accomplished work of the cross. Mm -hmm. The single Greek word, telesita, yes. it is finished. Proclaim, number one, the accomplished fact of Jesus' earthly mission mm -hmm. given him by the Father. Mm -hmm. Two, the fulfillment of an important Old Testament prophecy about the suffering Messiah. Three, the complete work of redemption as the sacrificial and Passover Lamb of God. Amen. Involving the blood atonement. Four, disciple, decisive moment of victory over Satan and his network of demons. Amen. Amen. And five, <clears throat> the achieved means of reconciliation mm -hmm. of God with his creation and sinful humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing can be added to finish work of the cross for salvation. The way of salvation is now open to all who believe and draw up upon Jesus' work, finished at the cross. Amen. We know um, seven is finished. Yes. It's, it's completion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus showed us that the cross, he was God, taking on the sin of the world for us. Yes. Jesus is God. Jesus and God were one, and yet taking on the sin, this something to Jesus. Uh -huh that we can not only imagine or describe. Jesus speaking said it is finished. We must ask ourselves, what is Jesus finishing? I hope you realize that the cross was not an, an accident or a fluke. Amen? Amen? It was not a fluke of history. Jesus on the cross was not an aftermath, afterthought. Of God, but the plan for the vi for the very beginning was the plan from the very beginning to reconcile us to Him. And the Garden of Eden, over to the relationship, was broken, and Jesus come to fix it. God had prepared, prepared the way through Abraham, Moses, the prophets, and many others, so that Jesus would come to the cross and pay the penalty for us. Jesus was fishing the plan of salvation. Amen. The seven word is completed. 
He said, I had ran the course and I had finished the race. I had to be about my father's business. Amen? Amen. Even when he was 12 years old, he said the same thing. Oh, yes. And Mary wondered, she pondered, what do he mean? Amen. He said, I have to be about my father's business. And he was amongst the scribes and different peoples. That he was teaching them something too. I said, where does this young man come from? This young man doesn't know everything. Yes. Amen. He knew everything. Amen. Oh, yes. Well, he said, I got to be about my father's business. He said, I'll go prepare a place for you. Amen. Oh, yes. And if it was not so, I wouldn't have told you so. He said, in my father's house, there are many mentions. Ha! Ah. I want to know if you got a place in the mansion. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he said 99 and a half won't do. Yes. Amen. Yes. I might not be where I need to be, yes. but I'm striving. Amen. I'm striving to get to 100. I fall down, but I got to get back up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because I know too much about them, and you can't make me doubt them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. As a little child, my grandfather taught me about the word. Amen. That's why it's still in me. Amen. A lot of people was going outside playing, and I was listening to Grandpa. He was saying, Sister, this what the Bible said. And I said, Really, Grandpa? And I wanted to know. I wanted to know all about it. Yes. Amen. Because I seen my grandfather praying on his knees, yes. and he was in his word. Mm -hmm. And then he would make me get down on my knees and pray every night. <laughs> and he would take me to church. Because my grandparents raised me from a little kid up to the point where my mother took me over. Right. Amen. But they was holy people. Right. Amen. They were saved. People I know they were saved. Right. I never seen them do nothing wrong. But right. praise God and get into the word. And they would take me to uh, Pastor Motley's church on Monroe. Right. Hey, and I was three or four years old. We would walk from Stanton Street over into Monroe Street. Uh -huh. Amen. But he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. I don't know, but I want to go where it rains no more. Where the eagle fly and return no more. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't you want to go there? Yes. Hallelujah. I want to go. There was no sickness. It won't be no diabetes no more. It won't be no high blood pressure. Hallelujah. It won't be no more dying there. Hey man, Jesus get there and he said, I'm going to sit on the throne with the 24 elders saying, Hosanna, the highest. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to sit on my throne, yes. my rightful place. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. I want to dance with my father. Yes. I haven't seen my father. I want to dance with my father. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God, my God. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, I want to go. I want to be in that mansion. I want to be in that number. When he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. So God so loved the world, yeah, that he gave his only begotten son. So that anyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. He said, in my father's house, there are many men. I got to be, uh, say that again. Say it, say if it was not so, right. I wouldn't have told you so. Yes. He said, My word won't come back to me, Lord, because he's a man that shall not lie. Uh, many people say they are atheists, but oh, on that day when Jesus come back Woo! and crack the sky, yeah. every knee shall bow Woo! and every tongue yeah. shall confess yeah. that he is God. Hallelujah. There ain't no way around it. Hallelujah. On that great day, yes. he gonna crack the sky. Yes. He gonna blow that trumpet yes. in the dead to rise. Yes. It don't matter how you go down. No. It doesn't matter how you come up. Yes. Hallelujah. They just throw your ashes in the river and let the shark bite you all up or whatever they do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you say that Christ 
Yeah. Hallelujah, you're going to meet him. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. step right on in, yeah. my good and faithful servant. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know too much about the Lord to all say be a castaway. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I could preach the others and I fall down and hell myself. Oh my God, there will be a mess. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody's worth it. Hallelujah. Nobody. No man and no woman is worth it. Hallelujah. We got to get on our post. Hallelujah. We got to examine ourselves. Where am I right now with Jesus? Hallelujah. We got to figure it out. We got to say, Lord, here am I. Do it for me, Lord, right now. Do it for me right now. Because he is on his way. Yes. Amen. Just look at the 24, Matthew 24, tell you everything that's going to happen. Yes. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. He said the high rise building is going to fall. Yes. Look what happened over there. Got burned up. They said it's going to fall, didn't they? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. They could build it all they want to. But at the end of the time, they're all going to crumble down. Yes. Hallelujah. They are in the Pope more than do Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is finished. Hallelujah. I have ran the course. I have finished the race. Hallelujah. They didn't do him too good while he was on earth. But he had to come. He had to come. Yes. And now he's seated in his rightful place. With his white robe. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Dance with my father. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to know do you want to go there? Hallelujah. Because some people don't believe that's a heaven and they don't believe it's a hell. But I tell you, I believe, I want to believe there's a heaven. Oh, I, I, I want to believe that it's a hell also because I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss it. Amen. I, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. When I was at that memorial today, it, it did something to me. Mm -hmm. It did. <clears throat> People think they got you figured out. They think you don't feel nothing. But you do. Amen. Amen. You do. Yes. Amen. Jesus felt something. Yes, he did. Nobody can... Uh, uh, imagine what he went through. You can only think oh. what he what he went through for us. Yes. Hallelujah. We don't even want to give him no praise. Come on now. Hallelujah. So I taught on a, 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 a lesson in the Bible study class. I said the power of praise and worship. I said don't let nobody take your praise. I don't care how they look at you. How they think they got you figured out. You give God the glory. Hallelujah. And that's what we make our mistake at. Hallelujah. We sit there and let somebody uh, screw face us and we say, oh, I'm not going to shout. Oh, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to lift my hand. I'm not going to do no. No, you get up. Because when you look back over your life and think things over, yes. hallelujah, you got a reason to praise them. Yes. You don't know my story and you don't know my praise. Hallelujah. 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 But Jesus had a story. Hallelujah. He had a story. Yes, he, on this, he was on this earth for yes. his ministry for yes. three and a half years. On, and he taught. Yes. And he taught the disciples. Yes. Amen. Do what I say. Yes. Amen. Do what I say. And say what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what I say. Because I'm going to teach you something. Watch me. Watch me demonstrate this. Amen. He said, you'll do better work. You'll do better work. They didn't want him to leave. Yeah. What are you talking about, Master? Why you gotta go? They didn't understand it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he had to go. He said, it is finished. Mm. I've done what I came to do. Mm. And now I gotta return to my Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is finished. Yes. Amen. And what more could you say? He done, done everything I come to do. Amen. Yes. Amen. But it's not over. Yes. He's still looking down on us. Yes. He's still walking with us. Uh -huh. 
when we saw one footprint in the sand. Yes. That's what he carried us. Yes. He's still talking to us. Yes. Do he ever talk to you in a still voice? Yes. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah, he talks to you like a, a, a normal person. If I was you, I would do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. He talked to me sometimes. Yes. It might not have been right away uh, 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 in a while, yes. but he has. Yes. And I said, what is this? Nobody going to believe me. Lord, is it you? Mm. Amen. If it's you, Lord, then uh, I want you to show me two visions. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Show me two visions if it's you. You want me to preach the gospel that I need to know it. It ain't the devil because the devil talks to you too. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. It is finished. Yes. It is finished. Yeah. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be finished. No more sickness. No more dying. Hallelujah. None of that. Yes. Amen. I've seen many people die. Uh, I'm on the funeral um, at the uh, to Bethel. I help out with the funeral. And I see the young and old. And I am finished. I see the young and the old dying. 29 year old girl the other day. Hey man, look like she just sleep. And I tell you, I couldn't just believe it. And that's why I had to, I had to get out of working at the funeral home because I can't stand to see all that all the time. It's too much. But I do help out there now and then. You know, but um, like I said, I'm, I'm a little heavy today. But I'm going to be all right. Yes. Yes. Amen. I'm going to be all right after this. Yes. But I have to be about my father's business too. Yes. I didn't want to get up here. And I said, oh, I'm going to mess up. <laughs> but you know what? Right. God did it. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 You can always uh, 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 have a, a, a shouting message all the time. Sometimes your people just need to be talked to. Amen. That's it. Amen. Sometimes it's going to be a fiery message all the time. Amen. You know? Amen. Sometimes you don't feel the anointing all the time. Because you need prayer yourself. You need the anointing to fall down on you sometimes. Because you you heavy in your spirit. Amen. 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 So that's where I'm at today. And I can understand uh, uh, Minister Sabrina, how she feeling. She yeah. feeling a little heavy herself. Amen. Amen. Some of us feeling from all that Thanksgiving food we preparing. <laughs> we feel <laughs> sluggish. <laughs> well, it is finished, and that's my word for the day. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my heart. Thank you. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my heart. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We just thank Elder Christine for bringing us those words today. And I thank all of the speakers today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to worry your patience long by elaborating. You all done already spoke wonderfully. And, and you have gone as the Spirit of the Lord has led you. Yes. Did you enjoy the service today? Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. And so uh, we just want to thank you. And so, how many of you have been to Jerusalem? Anybody? I had a chance to go to Jerusalem. And so I had a chance to witness the pathway that Jesus walked. Hmm. Go out the hill. You know, I got baptized in the River Jordan. Where they baptized wow. Jesus oh, at. Yes. Oh, I went to Pilate's Judgment Hall. Yes. And right. I told him I wanted to see everything that Jesus wow. experienced. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, they had a rock where he prayed on when he was in the Garden yes. of Gethsemane. And they had it kind of like roped off. You weren't supposed to go past the rope. And so I said, uh -oh. I made a conscious decision. I said, now listen, I don't know if I ever be back. So I done got this close to this rock, I got to go past the rope, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord. And lo and behold, I kind of think everybody 
else was waiting on everybody else to do it. Uh-huh. And so when I did it, I look around, here come everybody. I said, I know I'm gonna be in trouble now. Praise uh-huh. God. <laughs> but it is a wonderful experience. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's an experience that you will never, ever, ever forget. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I still cherish it right today. Amen. And so when we talk about what Jesus did in the Word of God, it just takes me back to those places where he stayed and where he, you know, uh, evolved in his ministry and how he went forth in his ministry. So that was a blessing for me, and I can relate to that even more so now today. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And so we just want a quick announcement here before we let you go. March the 28th at 4 o'clock p.m., Dr. Sylvia Black will be preaching at Pastor Wall's church, Manna from Heaven, and uh, that's next Sunday on the 28th. And so that was because her original Sunday was scheduled to be for tomorrow, and that's Easter. So we pushed it back another week, amen? And so if you're not busy that day, we just ask that you come out and support the WMCA for that service. Our regular order meeting for the WMCA will be held May the 11th at 1 o'clock p.m. at 446 Goodyear Avenue, um, and that's May the 11th. Amen? And so, if there is nothing else to claim our attention, let us stand. Amen. Did you have some last words? Uh, <coughs> you have announcements? Family and friends. We have the family and friends on April 28th. April 28th at 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, at 5. April 20th at 5. Okay. And um, our annual conclave, which is coming up. Yeah. May 18th yes. through. May 16th through the 18th. Yes. If you need any more information, the members of the um, WCA has flyers that we can share. Amen. And Amen. Um, Pastor Rocha, do you have an announcement? Oh, okay. Anybody else have an announcement? Uh, we were talking about the, the uh, baskets for the uh, Chinese auction. Chinese auction. Okay. Uh, I have a a clipboard that you can sign and uh, whatever thing you want to do, just write it on the clipboard and we'll go from there and after the service. And prepare to have a little rehearsal uh, next month because that's the month that we're in. Majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Did every heart say amen? Amen. 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 Have a happy resurrection day. Amen. 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 Thank you again for coming.